But yeah. have you have you played GTA at all? Like what, uh, GTA no. Online or or five? No, I mean I pretty much fell off the series after Vice City. Just like oh, none okay. of the none, none of the other games really appealed to me, and that mm. that was probably heavily because Vice City was like like that let that is literally my childhood, and like after that I was like okay I I don't I don't think any of these other games really are gonna do you know what Vice City did for me, so I was kind of done by that point. I had played you know Grand Theft Auto Three, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, Liberty City Stories, um, Vice City Stories. So yeah, I'd pretty much had enough of it by then. All right. Yeah. Uh, link is in the chat for anybody that the redirect for some reason doesn't work for. All right. All right. Um, cool. Cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. So, oh, I'm causing an echo. Mm, hey, okay. Forte, you need to mute yourself until I, I switch over. Oh yeah. Bye. <laughs> no problem um so yeah like i said we're going to uh oh robin says logic is the more seasoned gamer on the panel all right yeah I, you know i would think i agree with that you know i think you know he, he was he was gaming on uh on on the the, the earliest video game systems like I, I mean i started with a commodore but even though the Commodore was old at that point, it was a, the NES was out when I started gaming. But Se- yeah, seasoned, I mean, I seasoned is a uh, that is a uh, uh, that's the term you use to call somebody old without like <laughs> openly and directly insulting them. <laughs> All right. Forte. We are good to go. All right. Make, make sure you unmute yourself. Um, hopefully there's no more echo now. No, yeah, because the other stream should be gone now. So, right. uh, yeah, we, we are we are here. So final topic of um, Dash for Second 172. More PlayStation leaks or more confirmed PlayStation leaks or whatever you want to get. Leaks can't be confirmed. So more rumored leaks for the PlayStation 5 have uh, come out Tom Warren was it Tom Warren or Tom Henderson I can't think of who it was Tom Henderson. it was Tom Henderson Tom of Henderson. Insider Gaming I can I got all the yeah you got it up already yes. yeah yeah so go ahead and take us through how how Xbox should be scared of what PlayStation has coming out <laughs> at the end of this <laughs> well, year <laughs> so 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 you know this is all still unconfirmed so the, the proposed le- uh, specs that were leaked, it has been kind of confirmed by everyone who seems to know this stuff. Has uh, the claim is that the PS5 Pro would be under a little under 45% faster than the PS5 in raw, unoptimized rendering performance. Um, t- it is claimed two to four times faster than the PS5 in ray tracing. Have uh. 67 teraflops of uh, of fp16 which is actually just 33.5 teraflops uh which is around the amount of teraflops of uh rtx 3070 and will utilize a upscaler that's proprietary to playstation called the playstation spectral super resolution which is pssr um the Ray tracing aspects of it are supposed to be potentially based on RDNA 4 architecture, which is uh, due to be released later this year by AMD. Uh, but prob- the majority of this uh, this APU is based in RDNA 3 architecture. Um, I do have to say that AMD has been notoriously bad at ray tracing. Um, so bad that uh, with their very best GPU at this moment, is an art is a I'm sorry is a uh, 7900 XTX and without any kind of upscaler without any additional help with frame generation you turn that on and a lot of games are under 30 frames per second that's what their best GPU so that them being that bad I wonder where the two to four times faster 
is really being measured by. <laughs> so we'll have to see. Um, regardless, if it's based off of RDNA 4, I do expect RDNA 4 to be better. Um, the PSSR, which again is the PlayStation Upscaler, is supposed to be better than AMD's FSR. Uh, Microsoft is also working on their own upscaler, you know, which is supposed to be based in Windows 12. Um, but that's not the point. FSR is the worst upscaler that's out there. Uh, so it really shouldn't be too much of a surprise that PSSR is reportedly better. But what we're hearing is that they're taking a 1080p uh, native image and upscaling to 4K and allowing 1080p 60 games to be played at 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 4K uh, 60. So we'll 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 see we'll see how it works out. There have been some claims about Jedi Survivor potentially running at 4K 120 with PSSR enabled, and I guess I'm not going to say that's not true. I know that seems very unlikely to a lot of people, but we'll have to see. We'll have to see whether that, that turns out to be true or not. Um, Great. Course, so I can, I can look at crappy visuals at 120 frames per second. <laughs> <laughs> see, and that, and that's just it, right? Because like FSR can do, can hit, can help games hit a certain frame rate. The problem with FSR and the reason why people say it's the worst upscaler, it's the image that you, that you're left with in order to reach that. I, I mentioned before about how, um, oh, I think it was on one time with slow-mo where like when you play cyber, Cyberpunk and 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 I've played Cyberpunk on PS5 and which is using FSR the same way Xbox is in performance mode. When you're driving a vehicle or your motorcycle or your car, you see the ghost thing behind the vehicle. It's so apparent. Now with DLS DLSS, you see the little bit, but it's not that bad. It's really jarring with FSR and, and the artifacting and the the poor visual performance that you see in, when you, whenever it's compared against XESS, which is Intel's upscaler, and whenever it's compared against DLSS, it's always visually the worst one, in addition to rarely being able to beat the other upscalers when it comes to average frame rate. And so, yeah, I mean, like... <sighs> I, I'm hoping that's not PSSR, and we're not saying that it's PSSR, but I'm hoping it's better than that because, like, I, I can see a lot of gamers kind of like, man, on consoles, you're not going to get a choice, okay? Like with mm -hmm. Cyberpunk, you didn't get a choice to turn FSR off. They needed it to hit 60 FPS, and so it's on, whether you like it or not, in order to achieve that frame rate i i don't want you know playstation gamers to be like man that damn psr <laughs> like, it's just like it's, this image sucks you know i got my 60 fps but damn it, it don't look that good like i'm hoping that's not the case but uh, logic i cut you off man what, what were your thoughts on all this oh uh, i i'm sorry i didn't think you cut me off but um so the one thing that I wanted to say, first off, off the bat, my belief in perspective is you don't invest the engineering labor effort to make your own acceleration technique if your intention mm -hmm. is to go day and date on PC. Hmm. So I don't think. Oh, if, okay. If I hadn't thought the, about that. The people who ran wild with the, oh, what Totoki said means they're going day and date. I don't believe you do PSSSR. Or PSSR, I, I think you. I think That's you true. adopt AMD FSR and you and you make it work because you need to slipstream it and not have that delta, right? That methodology to getting the game on PC, which today you're not going to deploy a game on PC without FSR enabled, right? If you're coming, if you're coming from, well, I'll say for PlayStation, right? Because because they would normally use that FSR technique on console you're not going to go to pc without any acceleration technique so rather than go yeah. off and, and do your own you're going to double down on making fsr work because now you're going to have an increased dependency on it right to your game running well on pc if you're going hmm. day and date so that's just my personal belief um I, I had a that that's an interesting thought that i hadn't thought about that my idea about how with i'm gonna call it pisser now because apparently shot the porter rock <laughs> brian east 
said that Polaroid calls it the pisser, and now I can't get it out of my head either. So the pisser, PSSR is the pisser. Sorry, Sony, it's the pisser. You should have made a better name. Um, the pisser. So I, but my idea was is that they would also make that available um, on on PC as well. That like not for all games, but for their games, they would have the pisser be one of the various upscalers that you could use. You know how for for, for the most part we get we we have three. And for the most part, with now we're starting to see that that with every new release, the the three are available: XESS, FSR, DLSS. Yeah, I would. Um, I would have to see a really deeply detailed software architecture diagram for that, because mm -hmm. because my first assumption is that its its abstract dependencies go down to the OpenGL variant abstraction layer that it runs on on the PS5, and that that would not work on PC running on top of DirectX. Well, what if they did? It's only available in the Vulcan in the Vulcan API. I just don't know. I mean, is is because I, I don't think they use Vulcan. I know they don't use Vulcan. They don't have Vulcan available on every P uh, um, game. I think Nixus doesn't do Vulcan at all. Maybe I, maybe I'm wrong about that, but. I do believe they have Vulcan for the Uncharted collection, and I think they have Vulcan for maybe the first Horizon game. I don't know. Maybe they potentially they could have abandoned. Maybe The Last of Us had it too. I don't remember. But I mean, there are games on PC that run Vulcan, but I don't know. Maybe that might be something that might happen. I don't know. But I, I, I do like the thought of that potentially this could mean could be more uh, pushing them more along the lines of that we're not doing date and date. If anything, we want to make, hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. how about, how about this? What if Pisser allows them to say, even if we do go day and date, don't worry about it. The game, the, the pisser makes the games look, have more visual parity with PC and they don't put pisser on PC. So when it launches with pisser, it looks compa comparative to the, the PC experience. And so people, so console gamers don't feel like, well, I mean, in order to get the, the very best definitive version of the game, I got, I, I need to go get a, a a PC, which is what you hear so many uh, PlayStation gamers say. You go day and day on PC. I'm just going to build a PC. Well, why do that? You got pisser. PC don't I mean, got pisser. I mean, that's that. It, so I believe you're accurate in that it would play out that way. I just don't think that the Steam community would would grok with that whatsoever. And I think mm -hmm. you would see that reflected in the Steam community cultural uh, cultural uh, community reviews on the game. Um, and I think that that would tank we your sales on PC. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my pisser? <laughs> yeah. So my, <laughs> so, so my understanding, and I could be wrong, uh, is that PS5, PS5 does not, I mean, games on PS5 don't run on Vulkan. And Vulkan is not OpenGL. It's, it, in many cases, it, it replaces Vulkan, really? it replaces OpenGL. But I don't, I don't know that Vulcan is based on OpenGL, and I definitely okay. don't, I don't I don't think it's a I don't think it's a derivative, like like I don't for instance like I don't think it is like uh uh jeez what's the thing I'm thinking of I don't I don't think it's like Angular 2.0 right where mm -hmm. Angular Angular is a bad example because Angular 2.0 is not really compatible with Angular 1.0 and you have to do a whole but my point is is like it's not. It's not like a a next version of a JavaScript framework, for instance, right? Where you could just where you could just replace it, and then there would be some bugs, and then you would you know do some bug hunting, right? But it's 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 not a as far as I understand, it's not a one for one replacement. Okay, but again, like I said, right. I, I could be wrong. Hmm. Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, I like, I, like I thought I thought it was still I thought PS Five was still running on Vulkan, but I guess. So so, what, what is it? What is PS Five games my, running on? My my understanding, and again, I could be wrong. My understanding is that they they have an in house proprietary variant that is a fork of OpenGL. That is their abstraction layer, the, meaning it, it, that is essentially their equivalent for DirectX. Okay, okay, 
and, 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 and that's what I'm saying. So, so, so you take that, so you take that, uh, that frame rate acceleration technology, right? And, and to me, it's dependent upon if it, it, it depends on where it runs within the software architecture. If it runs, if it runs hierarchically above the abstraction layer and above the operating system, essentially, then it, then it's not necessarily impacted by the abstraction layer, but because the abstraction layer is the communications layer between essentially the operating system and the applications that are running on top of the operating system and the hardware, I think that abstraction layer would, would be in the mix. And so that's why I don't think that that pisser would be compatible. Um, <laughs> on, on, I'm, on top so, of the I'm so happy that we're all calling it pisser now. <laughs> <laughs> I am so happy this called pisser now. This it, it, it's giving me a, a, a sense of joy that just makes no sense. I guess it's the child in me. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely having fun with it. Yeah. So, so Forte, Forte, you, what are your thoughts about pisser and in this hardware? Because we we actually didn't even really dive into the race. Matter of fact, I might ask you about the ray tracing. Do mm-hmm. you believe the ray tracing performance is what it is? This is a console, isn't it? Yes, it is a console, yeah. Then basically what you're telling me is once again, we are looking at a console that when you turn the feature on, your performance gets worse. Nah, I'm good. I don't think... Listen, console PCs can't even do it right unless Ooh, you spend $4,000 on the graphics card. Go ahead. Give me a second. I forgot to write this down. Um, The CPU is not uh so the cpu ha- is a bit of a disappointment to some people who is it like 10 percent uplift it's a it's a it, well it's, a, it's 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 the exact same cpu that's in the ps5 that it can do a a two a 10 percent uplift that would uh the trade-off is one percent um makes the, the gpu one percent slower um but yeah that's that's about all there is with it. So it's a Zen 2 architecture C- CPU, which was not top of the line when back in 2020 when the console released anyway. So so, uh, so basically yeah. we're trading. So you're you're basically trading more stuff on the screen for higher texture qualities and better overall fidelity. Hmm. Does that sound like consoles to you? That's what console, a console. That's that. That's just what. That's what. <laughs> but that's what consoles always do. That's why it's like, man. It's like I always like this was even with this last generation when it first started. I was like, why are we pushing 4K? 4K is it going to be sustainable on these consoles, especially at the frame rate that we want? These systems, fourteen. Well, but they're not even four K anyway. I, I mean, I'm it's, it's always well, a dynamic, well, dynamic four K. It's 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 hundred p. Yeah, the it's 4K. always something. And, and to be fair, be fair on on PC, we don't always play native either. I mean, we play native far more often than you'll see it on console. But, that's but like, choice, this is what though. the. But that's this like, is that's yeah, exactly. Choice. You that's have the choice. choice to choose that. You you can choose to play native if you want and take the hit towards frame rate, or you could turn on the upscaler, get some more frames, play it how well, yeah, however I, you want. I, the I choice choose, is there on PC. Yeah, I choose I choose to play at three K. I choose I choose to play at thirty eight forty by what what is it. 3840 by yeah. 1600. That's what I that's what I play mm-hmm. at on my ultra wide. I choose to put I choose to lower certain graphical settings on my on my um on my rig to get the performance that I want to hit 80 frames per second in battlefield at 3K. You know, I, I decide to do that. So the biggest thing for me is anytime we're talking about something that takes away it degrades the quality and the performance of the game. I am not, a, I am not for, um, unless you got, like I said, like watching you play cyberpunk on a 40 or the 4080 super, I'm sitting there like, man, that's what gaming should be. That's what it should be. But you know, if you, you're asking consoles to do something that they just can't do. And that's always going to be the narrative around them, because that's why you see 8k on the box for a PS five, because they even knowing it, the only game that runs at 8k on a PS five is Gran Turismo. And it's when you're in the showroom and it's only certain parts of the car when you're in the showroom, it's not even a whole thing. So of course, since it renders it, they can actually talk about it and show and say that it actually does it. 
but that's kind of what the narrative is. So yeah, I don't have a problem with it. It's just more of the, just, it's just more of the, the things that people care about the most um, when it comes to like most gamers that play games, they don't care about the performance as much as you may think they do. They care about the next flashy thing that pops across the screen. So that's why you see, um, that's why you see a 1% um, hit to the GPU for the CPU to be uplifted. So you can get a little bit more of that, um, a little bit more stuff that you can see in the game. Like when it comes to draw distances and stuff like that, you know, stuff that people notice right when they pop the game open and stuff like that compared to, Oh, this game feels better at 60 frames per second. But you know, why does 60 frames per second have to be the, the benchmark? Why can't it be like something higher? Why, why, you know, we went straight from 60 to 120. And, and we can't even hold 60 consistently. So that's going to be a little bit, I think, a little bit more of a thing of the past um, with the PS5 Pro. I still think you're still going to have titles that are going to run at 30. But as long as developers are willing to look at the console and say most people don't care about that, we're going to hold for what's going to sell the game, which is explosions graphics and everything else then you're going to be stuck in this situation forever i feel and i think that's why they think pc is the way to go they'll tell you developers tell you all the time if you if you want the bells and whistles go to pc you know console is where you go to you know just experience gaming at its like native level where pc is where you go to immerse yourself fully in what gaming could possibly be mm -hmm. So I think the uh, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, go no, ahead. I was going to logic. I was going to ask you what, what, what were your thoughts about the CPU as well. So, so I think the real world comparison when we talk about right compute throughput of the new GPU is that that, that comparison is going to be ten point two eight teraflops on the PS five now to seventeen teraflops on the PS five Pro. So there's lots of there's there's theoretical there's the headroom that the new GPU provides. But once you talk about all of the layers that it has to go through, it, it becomes a comparison of 10.28 to 17, I think. Um, the problem with the CPU is, in a, and I mentioned this earlier at the top of the hour when we were talking about handhelds. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually do want to go back. I, I, I wouldn't call it correction, but I just a difference in perspective. I think, because Forte, you mentioned um, the, the potential of handhelds. I just, I, I think I would... I would recommend that people look at the handheld market and what the kind of sell through has been to this point. Cause mm. steam deck wise, oh, yeah, there's, yeah. there's been maybe, maybe at best like 4 million steam deck sold. The raw yeah, last I saw was three, right? The, the last official number I saw from valve was 3 million. So yeah. Right. Right. And then there's been about maybe 500,000 raw allies sold. And then you probably maybe, you know, you could chuckle, you could salt a little right on there for the Legion thing and the, and the claw. But I mean, the, the numbers NEOs and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, the numbers are not huge. Um, so that's, I don't, I just don't know how well like a full compute handheld was. I, 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 yeah. So, so there's that, but, uh, but I think, you know, looking at handhelds and then looking at this thing on the PS5, what one thing and, and thinking about doesn't impact the console space, but, but, but the PC space is the windows operating system. Well, that's that's the piece. I'll go ahead and mention that first and then get off of it. Just really great. The Windows operating system does not natively address and support the new types of hybrid CPUs that are out. So when you talk about the 7800, you, when you talk about the X3D chips, um, when you talk about the 14,000, 14900KS that just came out, some of the specialized high-end enthusiast type uh, Intel chips, mm -hmm. the, the operating system does not natively have all of the things that it needs to support optimization and maximum performance of those chips. And so and you, you wind up with wonky things like the, what is it? The 7950 X3D that will sometimes underperform the 7800 X3D on uh, with the Ryzen chip. You will have things like Intel now has a, I think they call it, I can't remember what acronym they call it, but they have like application specific tuning that they go in now and provide that as an additional driver and a package that you could download to optimize performance of its hybrid chips with things like Adobe um, and certain games like Red Dead Redemption 2. But like 
literally Intel engineers have to go in and like specifically tune that to the application to get the performance out of those chips. So, um, you know, the notion of the notion of handhelds and, you know, that in, in the Xbox operating system is a derivative of the Windows operating system, right? So that's a problem. But my point is, is that that is part of a larger problem. And that is a problem that within a box, power is finite. And so when you add additional cores right into the box, along with additional GPU power, the thing you're going to bump up against is that at the end of the day, you still have a TDP ceiling, right? That is a combination of, of power and how much cooling you're able to provide. And so having the more powerful GPU in the same box with the PS5 with the same processor still is going to lead you to situations like, you know, it, the CPU has a high performance mode, but when you turn on that high performance mode, then it causes a negative hit on the GPU because you don't have enough power, right, to, to power both when the CPU is in that high power mode. So I think there's going to be so obviously just like you're saying slow mo there's there's going to be some limitations right on 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 what this thing can do. It's it's going to provide additional overhead right and additional performance. But but at the end of the day, some of the wild things that we've seen running around about people comparing it to you know four thousand series GPUs that's just not oh that's crazy. realistic. Yeah, I love it though. I love it. you know let me let me let me get my soapbox for a second. You know just for a moment to discuss the the the. The, the the guys that like to throw rocks and then hide their hands, the guys that like to take the first punch and they look like the swing first and they get knocked out and be like, what happened? Why they do that to me? This is why we, why they did that to you. Okay. Cause you run out out there at the mouth talking about things you don't understand and then get mad at the response. If, if you don't want PC gamers talking about your hardware, not even your hardware yet. You ain't made it. You ain't bought it yet. But still, talking about the PS5 Pro that you want. Excuse me. If you really want PC gamers not to mention it, stop comparing it to PC. Stop going around saying, oh, man, this is this. This PS5 Pro is going to be on level with a 4080. No, it's not. Stop it. When your own fellow PlayStation gamers say things like, y'all need to chill out. Think about how much this is going to cost. Think about how much some of these, these GPUs you're mentioning saying it's on par with cost. It, it ain't going to be like that. But instead of heeding their advice, you choose to double down. See, like you have a don't y'all remember what happened four years ago? Don't y'all remember this talk four years ago? Not just PlayStation gamers, so Xbox guys too. Oh, the teraflops. Oh, it's just math. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Because what happened when the consoles came out? In between all that talk and then the consoles coming out, NVIDIA and AMD dropped even more GPUs that were even more powerful than what the consoles were. They didn't even have to do that to have GPUs that were more powerful than the, than, than the consoles that are out right now. Do you really think this PS5 Pro is going to be... It's no one who understands... The, this hardware at all it would thinks in any way shape or form that a ps5 pro is is on the level of a 4080 but the and it's like the fact that people say it and what, what, what bewilders me is when the response is i wish these pc gamers would just get out of console conversations <laughs> i wish i didn't have to see your stupidity how about that? I wish y'all would do a, a a a minor bit of research before you step out there and say things that don't make any sense. This is why they and get you mad should at not them. be yeah, you should be mad at your own fellow colleagues whose IQs are apparently lower than the frame rates y'all get on consoles. Who keep saying this dumb crap. 
because they're the one they're the root of the problem they're the ones that start the conversation they jump on social media chirping at PC gamers. Oh, you spent three, four, five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars. It's so funny how they keep going up a thousand like every five seconds. You spent all that money on your PC, and I'm gonna get all that performance and more in just five hundred dollars. First of all, the fact that you think the PS5 Pro is gonna be five hundred dollars is laughable. Laughable. They're not dropping the regular original PS5 price that's not happening this pro is going to be at least 150 dollars or more okay so think like 650 anyway the fact that you really think you're going to get the same performance or better with far less cost oh my god <laughs> like this is, why they, this is ridiculous this is why they get mad at the digital stupid. foundry video <laughs> yeah how dare digital foundry tell the truth <laughs> I mean, part, like, part, of the, part of the part of the math that people should do is think think about it from the business perspective. AMD, AMD, Lisa Sue, very 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 intelligent person, Lisa mm-hmm. and and Jensen, right at Nvidia. Yep. AMD A, AMD is in the business of selling GPUs. PlayStation is in the business of selling PlayStation fives. Well, PlayStations in general. PlayStation has already said that the PlayStation fi- that they weren't losing money on PlayStation fives. So, yep. Sony is not going to walk that backwards this far into the generation by selling you a PlayStation five that is that they're eating the cost on. So now let's swim upstream of that. Right, the cost, the cogs, the cost of goods sold to PlayStation is based on the raw materials that have to be purchased, which they have to give a promise to AMD how many they're going to buy. AMD is not going to sell them, <laughs> right, GPUs that they are eating the cost on, right, in order to give people performance that outperforms their PC GPUs. Because they want to sell PC GPUs. Mm. And if PC gamers believed that they could literally get the exact same performance in a PC GPU from a PlayStation 5, then that would cannibalize their sales. Just the same way, this is what's super funny to me, the, the PlayStation camp always talks about they're not going day and date, even I say it that they're not going day and date because that'll cannibalize PlayStation hardware sales. Well, why would you, <laughs> they, why would you think that reasoning wouldn't apply? <laughs> right. Why would you think that same reasoning wouldn't apply to AMD? <laughs> <laughs> only, only PlayStation needs to make these decisions. Everyone else. No, don't, don't think logically at all. Don't do that. No, no. Yeah. Just, and by, I, I just find, I just find it hilarious. And, and by then, like, just like you mentioned, but the other thing to think about is like by, by the time PlayStation five pro comes out, Right, the the next generation of GPUs will also be hitting the street, you know, at least yep. from the AMD side, and maybe yeah, yeah. maybe it, from NVIDIA's the NVIDIA side coming. too. But I don't know. I, I heard NVIDIA is not coming out until uh, middle of next year, which is why they kind of did a little refresh earlier this year to kind of, you know, have a another uh, product. Technically, not really. I mean, they they added a new product and replaced two. But just to have something else out there, especially you like considering that the 4080 super clearly is just the 4080 with like slightly better like CUDA cores and maybe slightly faster, maybe can't remember. It's, um, yeah, it's it's weird. Sy- it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. But, no, I, I, was, I, synthetic, that- I mean, synthetic <laughs> benchmarks of the 4080 is still a skosh faster than the 4080 super, right? It's just that the 4080 super is cheaper. No, I heard that. I heard the opposite. From the reviews I saw, it was that it was the the forty eight super was like two per, two to three percent faster than the forty eighty. Okay, but there's okay. but but in 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 the majority of the games, they don't like that that difference is isn't seen. They basically run the same in almost everything, and and you may see slight a slight improvement in frame rates and and on the super, but not by much in that. Uh, really, this was just Nvidia refusing to admit they overcharged for the 4080 for the 4080 originally, 
and having a two $200 price cut without admitting there's a, that they need the price cut the the 4080. So here they just made a 4080 super that's $200 cheaper and it's the exact same product or barely almost the same product regardless is yeah it's 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 a cheaper same thing but they 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 released that this year to kind of help have something released this year because they're not going to have anything until until 2025 but AMD definitely is dropping GPUs, obviously probably somewhere in between late summer to early fall or something like that. And so, yeah, that will be out before the PS5 Pro. So, yeah. And I think, yeah. I think, I think if, it, I mean, NVIDIA will let them come out, they'll let them get into supply because we all know that the GPUs drop and then they're not really available, right? In, in easily accessible inventory for like a couple months at least. Right. But I think they'll let them get out, and they'll and they'll wait to see benchmarks hitting the street and see them. But I mean, I but I think if if any of those, like I, I think they would let them get outpaced by like one AMD SKU, maybe. Um, and definitely not at the top end. Obviously, at the forty eighty forty ninety level. Um, but I think, but I think if if they see something that that they don't like, just in terms of like, you know, an AMD SKU coming out that like makes the forty seventy irrelevant. I think that they will. I think that they'll they'll juice one of their SKUs with extra CUDA cores or something like that to to get a card out that just allows them to claim you know best you know fastest card at the mid GPU point or something. I like think that. that's the biggest focus for them too. Is like AMD. It's like as much as we we talk about how Nvidia just price gouged everybody out here. I think they're just waiting for AMD to make them have to do something about it. And um, AMD just, mm, I mean, you got ARC out there and, you know, not too many people are. I mean, that's a hard market to break into when you're talking about GPU. So, you know, ARC is actually a pretty good offering, but people just don't really believe in it just yet enough to actually, you know, mass adopt it at AMD. It used to be the budget, you know, friendly GPU, but even those GPUs are still not at the price point that you would think that uh, would really threaten Intel, not Intel, but uh, NVIDIA to actually move their their GPUs off of where they're actually sitting at. I mean, I, I think NVIDIA did a, a solid by releasing the 4080 Super at a cheaper price than the 4080 was when it first came out, but... I'm kind of scared to wonder what the five thousands are going to look like. You know, are we going to, is, is, is NVIDIA going to basically just take this, you know, momentum that they have with these GPUs now and just keep moving forward with the price and price, basically pricing people out of it at the very beginning and coming back towards the middle of the generation and, you know, doing what they did this time, or is AMD going to actually give a fight to make them feel like that price has to matter when it comes to GPU purchases? I have given up on AMD actually being smart about pricing because they clearly could be far more aggressive they could um, be. on their pricing to because when it comes to pure rasterization, pure just like temporal anti-aliasing kind of rendering of of the of the, the these games, they actually are not only just competitive with NVIDIA, but for the most part outside of the top product that nvidia drops they do on a routinely outperform them the mm -hmm. problem is is every is everything else you right. you suck at ray tracing you have the worst upscaler and everyone uses those things in their game so when they turn that stuff on you are behind you so you you even though you got better at software like amd adrenaline is actually really good software that would say it's better than geforce experience which is here competition it's the reason why nvidia came out with their nvidia app to try to do better to compete with amd's adrenaline because amd's adrenaline is better than geforce experience you did better in those areas but you still don't price your product appropriately it shouldn't be about strictly about well we are better on rasterization but we are worse at upscaling and race racing therefore let's just make all of our gpus in, in, of comparable levels a hundred dollars cheaper that's not enough because frankly you you have to think think about the other element of things that like your brand power isn't as strong as nvidia's is 
So well, you need to like Intel is even though Intel is worse than AMD at GPUs right now, mm-hmm. they're smart about it. They understand when they came out with Arc, our product sucks. <laughs> it's they, not that they, good. They, they, but it sucks. <laughs> it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, <laughs> hey, too, and so what, what did they do? They stole five percent market share in the market almost immediately for having yeah. a cheaper product. They took yeah. a third of AMD's market share like that with a product with terrible drivers. Yeah. Couldn't couldn't perform anything. It is slightly be- slightly better upscaler and slightly better at race racing, but who the heck ca- cares about race racing on a low budget GPU anyway? Right. And now they're about to drop Battle Mage. Now, if Battle Mage is just as aggressive, Battle Mage is supposed to be their mid tier. So this is supposed to compete against like a 4070 and a and a um a 7700 XT. If they can compete like that, that should be what Intel is doing. They should be that aggressive, being like, "Hey, two hundred and fifty dollars cheaper." Comparatively, how, like, are you how, really going to be that stupid PC gamer? You should. Well, you should buy our product, so but they won't do that. This, yeah, but how much? Okay, so it, it, it just playing a little devil's advocate because I don't know, and maybe this is their thinking. How much is this? This lack of basically want to from in uh, AMD that we see comes from the fact that they make their bones and consoles and also on their you know their cpu side because cpu side they're they're good and then they they've always had you know the the market corner when it comes to pretty much to consoles you know that being the bread and butter probably what keeps uh, a lot of the gpu manufacturing side of it at where it's at like they yeah it's cool that we can sell a lot of cpus i mean a lot of gpus out there to people that want them you know individually but when it comes to the majority of the money we make in the gpus in apus we do that mostly through our console deals that we have with playstation and xbox and then cpus you know you know most people will tell you nvidia not nvidia intel and amd pretty neck and neck generation to generation you know sometimes amd comes most of the time amd's out on top but then intel comes out with their new their new um their new line or the new series and it kind of outpaces amd at that point until amd comes out with another one so they really compete when it comes to the a the c the cpu side of it it's just that the gpu side i just feel like it feels like they just just say we're, we're going to have a product there just to say we have a product there because we really don't look at that as the thing that sustains us like we do, you know, CPUs and the deals we have with, you know, Microsoft and Sony when it comes to the APUs. Probably a bad way to think about it if if I'm them, but I think that's probably part of the reason why they don't really try to compete in CP in GPUs like that. Well, I mean, they've said, I mean, since they bought, ATI, right? I mean, they've said since not not too many years thereafter that their intention normally is is not to go head to head with Nvidia, right? At the high end, right? Um, that it's that it's always a value play, you know. And then they started playing this game in the last few years of where they've given you more VRAM, and that was supposed to be their product differentiator. So, I mean, I just don't know, you know. And then when they and then when they do try to take them on head to head, right at the high end, I would. I, I would contend that those things don't go well, like with the 7900 XTX and the and the power problems it had. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, you know, I, at the end of the day, I, I'll still contend that, you know, the, the Radeon problem is is to me much less of of performance and much more of of the 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 pain in the ass that they are. True. True. Um, like even. Look, I'm, I'm, you, you know, I'm, I'm only going to do so much software stuff on my PC, but, but still, you know, I, I run multiple boxes. I, I put up with a lot more overhead than the average PC gamer does. And even I don't want to put up with the mess that is, you know, managing a Radeon GPU. Yeah. You know, I, it's just, it's just not worth it. 
Yeah, I, I always thought about that because part of me wanted to go with an AMD build uh, because I've been AMD for my um, CPU for about five, six, about five years now. So uh, ever since and, and haven't had an issue since I switched over because I just feel like it's 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 good. But uh, your, your I, CPUs are great since Ryzen. Yeah, it's, uh, like I got a fifty nine fifty X, so it's 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 great, you know. 16 cores, 32 threads. Can't can't go wrong with that. But I, I mean, it, I mean, I would I would contend since Ryzen. Look, at I know I'm gonna make some people angry. There has been no reason to buy an Intel CPU except for the except for the one blip where they got Alder Lake on on the street right before the next the next gen AP, uh, AMD chip. But yeah, the, in the in Ryzen general, 7. the yeah since since Ryzen has come out, the only reason to go Intel on CPU is just brand trust. Like there are some people who will just always buy Intel and that's fine. I understand that. But performance to performance, cost to performance, I haven't seen any reason to buy. A- well, I will say when it came, well, like you said, the, the trust, the performance, but I also think when Ryzen, when right, when they came out with Ryzen seven um, or gen five, which is what they're on now, I think there was a bunch of issues with, motherboards you know gen uh mm-hmm. gen 5 motherboards were having issues it was it, first of all you couldn't find them and then on top well, of the, that you had power power issues with them when it came to like matching them up with the um the higher end rises like the 7700s or the 70 7790 x x's and stuff that was a big issue compared to nvidia not nvidia intel um it i mean they had some issues but Everything was more stable. Plus, the power draws were a lot lower on and I think the every, Intel when it first came out. And I think everything got smoothed out pretty quickly. Yeah, I think it, did. it did. It did. I, I, I think their major. I will say that their major push against them was the the flip to DDR5. Well, yeah, no, they did. Well, yeah, that was that was the big thing. That's what kind of hindered um, rising out the gate to flip to DDR5 at first because they had to that forced them to leave uh AM4 to go to AM5 and then uh that's where they were having issues with motherboards and stuff because you had to go uh DDR5 on those and even with the it's like the memory wasn't wasn't uh was restricted to certain CPUs you couldn't even find the the, the motherboards on the market um had overheating issues when it came to the CPU. Um, and then coolers weren't working properly. It was just a whole bunch of crazy stuff going on with AMD. But that's the one thing I like, like what I said earlier. It's like, but once AMD gets that stuff figured out, like you said, there's no reason to go Intel unless you just like having an Intel build. And and I get it because it's it's safer and people just kind of like having the same thing under the under the hood. Whereas um and, and then gaming is a little bit more pre- is a little bit more feature rich when it comes to Intel, uh, even though it is slightly ahead of AMD. But where AMD really really thrives is when it comes to their multi core faucets and stuff. So it really just depends on what you're going for. I I just couldn't fathom not having an AMD at this point. But then again, I haven't messed around with Intel in like three generations to see how much better that could be now. Yeah, well, and that was. That- that was really just a flip to Ryzen Seven. I'm sorry, go ahead. Right. I wanted to kind of draw it back to the 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 PS5 topic. Um, but oh, I mean, all, we're, all, we're, all, we're all the things that you were. Were we talking about? Yeah, consoles? yeah, that was that was the point for it. Yeah, we, uh, we were talking about console. Yeah, you know, um, just buy a PC. The, 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 just buy a PC. That's what you do. Yeah, the, yeah. There's the, 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 just people that won't do that. They the, the, the cost is not what they they're, they're looking at. So you, they, they'll make all the excuses in the world about how things are simpler on consoles. I think it's just the cost of uh, of what the kind of performance they want to have on PC. They're not going to uh, engage in that. that. Regardless, that's not really the point. The PS5 Pro is uh, the point. Um, the question I have for about that, to kind of draw it back to that, is about price. So you guys were having a good conversation about AMD. Um, considering what we know about what this 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 the, the APU that's in this, which is um, a hybrid of of Zen two uh, architecture and Zen three and potentially Zen four, because you know, weirdly enough with uh the the storage which is one terabyte with the the 
PSSR, you know, uh, architecture uh, that's going to be and be software that's going to be involved with it. We clearly they're going to lock to just the PS5 uh, mm-hmm. Pro. You're not going to be able to get that on PS5. Mm-hmm. Um, where do you think? Where do you guys see the pricing for this being? Logic, uh, you can go first. Well, go ahead, four already. <laughs> Six hundred. Listen, the price is right. Six hundred. Six hundred. I'm already six hundred one. Six hundred one. Yeah. No, no, whatever, no, whatever number. <laughs> whatever number. Whatever number that allows PlayStation not to lose money. That's what it's gonna be at. I mean, I think it could be anywhere from six hundred to six fifty. I, I th- what I do think is I don't think I can't. I can't remember. I think the PS4 Pro was this way. I mean, there there won't be a lower end. I mean, now mm. there now there is no lower end, right? Because you you, you uh, what, PS4 what is, was the price of the PS PS4 Pro was the same price as the PS4 when it came out. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I knew that, but um, but my point is, is that I can What is the new digital now? Is the are the slim? Is it's there like, still an optical like drive four, and a slim? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Okay, so and a digital. The, the slim is the the PS. So it's the only thing they sell now. They sell it with. The the Blu-ray and okay. they sell it without the Blu-ray and without the Blu-ray is four fifty and with it it is five hundred. Yeah, so okay. my, so my point is I I don't think that there will be a lower end skew. I don't think there'll be a PS5 Pro without the optical drive. I think it'll just be the the high end and I because I think they're gonna they're gonna mark they're gonna put them on the market as like it's th- it's now a three tier skew right it's the PS5 Pro with an with an optical drive the PS5 with an optical drive and the PS5 digital um but but i think i think the price could be anywhere from 600 to 650 i mean it's it's all it's all going to depend about it's all going to depend on the market at the time what's going on with foreign exchange rates it is it is it is not going to be a matter of what the market has traditionally stomached because i think they proved that they don't care about that with mm-hmm. psvr2 i think it's yep. all going to be entirely driven by finances and the market and they're gonna they're gonna put it on the market with whatever again going back to Totoki, whatever Totoki says they are willing to bear in order to make the profit margin that they need to. So I would mm-hmm. I would I wouldn't be surprised. I think the six fifty is the high end, but I also think that's that's the surprise price tag where they're gonna be a lot of people to say, Oh, they're not gonna sell any. But you know, yes. I, I think they'll sell, you know, what they think they need to sell at the, at, at that price point if they need mm-hmm. to go that high. Yeah, I I think six fifty is the number. I think I think they they won't drop the PS five. We uh, we we see how they have mentioned and and various other uh, uh, platforms manufacturers have mentioned how pr- uh, the pricing of 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 co- of creating these products is not uh, the components is not going down. It's it's staying where it's at or it's going up. And so I don't think that they will drop the price of the PS five. Uh, anytime soon not nor should they honestly when it's selling good if it's selling good then wh- why why drop the price you know keep making money um i do think that uh with it the price thing consistent with what these the ps5 uh, the ps5 slim is that the ps5 pro would be the same and i do agree with you like it's just gonna be one skew it's just gonna be here is the the PS5 Pro with the Blu-ray player attached. You can take it off if you want or whatever. I don't think they'll change the the design of it too much. Uh, although it wouldn't surprise me if they did have to uh, make some changes due to how they want to do cooling, because that's the one another big issue with consoles is cooling. Can you can you cool it down enough in order to for for things to remain consistent in that? Uh, have a console that's like dead in three years. So I, I, if that's a that's a, a issue with them with manufacturing, that might play a part too. But I just think six fifty is 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 the low is the lowest we're going to see this be. I think they're going to do both because I think it's going to be six hundred for a digital. Now they could just go just digital and make the PS4 Pro digital or PS5 Pro digital and they already have the disk drive on the market for 80 bucks and just tell people if they want to have a disk drive they have to buy it separately part of me feels like that would be the wrong move for them to make because I think a lot of people might well I mean then again most people are digital at this point 75% of the the market is digital right so so 
So part of me feels like they're just going to come out with a six hundred dollar system and tell people if you want a disk drive, buy it, and they're just going to make it so that the I, I one think that they have now is going to be the one that fits now. But if but I, I don't think they're going to do that with a uh, with the PS six, but not this pro. I think with the PS six, they will just have a all a, all digital system with the option of a physical and if you want physical all right cool we have it here but it's going to be slightly like different from where they are right now with the ps5 where it's like we'll give it to you we'll, we'll have a option of a skew with it in there but at, by the time ps6 comes out which is like supposed to be like 2027 2028 that as things are trending with digital at that point, they could be they could feel comfortable saying, "Hey, look, we we have a physical option for you if you want that. It's going to cost you more, and it's separate. So I, do with that I, as you will." No, and I agree, but I also just think I'm trying to figure out how many people would upgrade if there if the only PS5 Pro they can buy is the one with a disc drive, and they already and they only do digital. Well, I don't I mean, think I, I don't I don't I don't think the primary market is upgrading. I, I think the primary market yeah, of who you're going to get in are the people who have held off on buying a PS5. No, no, there's going to be a, there's going to be a, quite a few people that's going to upgrade too. But I do agree that the, it's going to be the the people that are going to upgrade are the people that's going to see Grand Theft Auto and drop their mouth and going to be like, oh my god, that's like only best played on a PS5 Pro. Those and are the, the people that's going to buy that system right off the bat. And those are the people who aren't going to be bothered by there only being oh, one SKU. Well, those gonna, people don't care, yeah. Right, because they're care. and and they're going to take their PS5 and they're going to bring it into you, and they're going to trade it in, and you're going to give them about three twenty five to three fifty, and that's going to take four hundred two okay, right now. and that's going to take the price off, right? And they're going to pay mm -hmm. the remainder, so they're not even going to think about that. I just yeah. did that with my son. And and, and, <laughs> and honestly, like the only people who know what pisser is are the hardcore gamers. And I think pisser <laughs> is going to be the fact that you, you ain't got no pissing on the regular PS five. What pisser is all over the PS five pro is going to be like, man, how is it like the hardcore gamers are going to see digital foundry go here are the comparisons, <laughs> right? Of right. the PS five playing X game and the ps5 pro playing it and look look at the difference the flat out difference it's like a maybe 15 frame difference but then we turned on pisser and with pisser <laughs> it's even more and then they're the hardcore gamer is going to be like well damn it i'm going to forte i'm taking that 350 400 i'm putting that down i'm putting oh, I'm, I'm i'm spending an additional 250 to get pisser because i need i need this piss in my games, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> and and Rel, Rel, Rel's there in the chat. I mean, he just said something that told me too. If if you include that, right? If if somebody does a bundle and do says it. I'm going to get a Dual Sense Edge along with it at a at a cost savings to buying the Dual Sense Edge separately, uh, at that at that point I'm buying a PS5 Pro anyway. So I'm like, yeah, I'll go, I'll go into I'll take the Dual Sense Edge. I would too. Like that now, now, that's the only controller I have. Now, 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 Rosier said, you know, make it seven hundred dollars. And that, when you say, and then Lucius in the chat thinks seven hundred dollars too. At this point, at what nah, point? It, it was, at what point are we? Are we talking? Why are you even bothering with a console at this point? You should I just mean, go build, build a buy pre built PC. I, I agree. These, these price numbers. My, like, my, I don't know what seven hundred is it, but when you get over seven hundred. Build a PC or buy a uh, pre-built. I, yeah. I, th I think once you once consoles start getting up like to eight hundred dollars, then at that point, build a PC. But I, yeah, I, there's, but there's no good. purpose at that point. But I think at seven, I think at seven hundred, you, I think at seven hundred, you 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 force you're going to cause people to start asking that question, right? And and when some of them start asking that question, you're going to lose some of them. Now, the seven hundred dollars with the with the Dual Sense Edge, I think that's okay. But if it, yeah. if if it just comes out at seven hundred dollars itself, I think you're going to have a, a certain percentage of your addressable market who's going to say, "Hmm, maybe I should just go ahead and save my money and buy a pre-built PC right at at eleven hundred dollars or so, right? right. Sa you know, save an extra payday, save an extra two paydays or whatever for four hundred bucks, um, and you're gonna you're gonna wind up losing some of them. 
Yeah, you're in dangerous territory at that point, especially considering where people are estimating where the performance is. People are estimating the performance of the PS5 Pro was somewhere in between the 3070 and 3070 Ti, right? Like if I went on Best Buy right now and looked up pre-built, uh, pre-built or Micro Center, whoever, right? Looked up pre-built PC with 3070 Ti in it. I'm probably going to come up with some very close pre-built numbers that that match that i actually want to check it r- real quick while while you guys discuss because like, i think that's kind of fascinating if you think about it Be, and i think that's yeah. something that both uh i don't know if microsoft cares about this or not. No, <laughs> but i think sony microsoft definitely should, does microsoft should come out with an 800 hundred dollar console they should come out with one because i feel Why? like for, because no because i feel like for them if they came out with Okay, so you, you got to look at it like you're not going to mass manufacture a bunch of those. You're probably only going to say we're we're looking to only probably sell 15 to 20 million of these things at most, you know, because I just feel like at a certain point, give people what they really want, you know, when it comes to like high end console game, because there will always be people that just prefer consoles over anything else. And yes, that sounds like a ridiculous number. But I do, there's people out there that will buy something like that. You know, like you won't mass adopt something like that, but I can see in a console space, a lot of people are taking in something that's 700 to $800 on the high end when it comes to a console, especially if the performance is actually there. And um, it's something that they could just hook up to a TV and not have it still have that console only experience and stuff. So, you know, I'm not saying it's not going to be something that's going to mass adopt, but I feel like them of all people, especially since they don't care about console sales like that, just make something that's ridiculously good for the people that want it and then go from there. Xbox should do Xbox should take up Valve's banner and just make a Steam box. Yes. Right. But not a Steam box, but an X an Xbox, right? Mm-hmm. Take that take that chassis they have for the Series S, maybe make it a little bigger standardize it and just say look th- your xbox is always going to look like this but we're going to constantly upgrade the internals they need to just and they just need to make that a standardized pc chassis make it that accommodates idea. like an it you know make it an itx form factor or something because it, because my point is why why does xbox of all people with their dwindling hardware sales why are they spending millions of dollars every generation in r d coming up with a new cooling solution for a new chassis just standardize it on just just standardize it right make it an itx form factor or something similar micro atx whatever switch to nvidia make that a low-end gaming pc take the windows operating system or the derivative or whatever that it is on the xbox keep the simplified ui slapped on top of it but just make it the same windows right Maybe do some additional stuff you need to do to keep it running stably so it doesn't have all the problems Windows does. But but my point is, at the end of the day, just make it the low-end PC, drive developer support of it by just spreading and making wider to a certain extent, to a small extent, based on what their sales are, right? But the choices developers are making is they're making choices based on Hey, for every dollar of optimization time that I spend on a hardware skew or a hardware target, what is my return? And and right now, when you present that math to them for the Xbox, you don't have a very strong argument. Right. So just make it another PC target, right? Then then when they're looking at PC, then they're like, okay, of all the different SKUs of all the different GPUs, right? What, how much time do I spend? And just make the Xbox part of that same math that they're doing for the PC SKUs and for the P- PC hardware configs. I, you know, I kind of made a suggestion that that was a, uh, that was kind of like that um, before about Xbox, about like essentially having Xbox branded, uh, not necessarily that they, they make the, the PC parts, but they have their X, you know how like with storage, for example, they have, um, Seagate, not necessarily well, well yeah Seagate made a proprietary piece but not something that's proprietary but something that's just like take the other ones where it's like you people would get external hard drives that had Xbox branding on it it was no different than the actual 
uh non xbox branded product but they got xbox on it they charged like 20 dollars more and people bought it thinking like it was, it was specifically for xbox or some crap like what if they just had like they worked with with amd and had xbox branded gpus that people could put into like a a some some maybe like a mini itx case that is considered an xbox and you kind of just almost kind of like when you go to a website and you can get get a pre-built made and you can choose all your parts for your pre-built to get the, the level of performance that you want the xbox actually builds that into their own xbox.com where you can do all those things to get your own pc built with it all green is glow all the rgb oh. is green and oh man what and if it's, what, what if what if xbox <clears throat> design labs became that Ooh, became the dope. low end pc configurator yes. Yes. And, and then and then and then look, and here, here's, here's the key, here's the key, though. Here's the key to really get the Xbox community into this. You have. A version of Windows 12 that's literally just an Xbox OS. So all the yeah. stuff in the background, they can't stand about Windows and they don't understand all the all the all the drivers. I'm so confused. I don't understand. Forget all that. You have an Xbox OS that does all that for you. Yeah, and so take, so it's so take all that stuff and push it to the background, which which yes. is much to my chagrin and what pisses me off is that's what they've been doing with Windows for years, is taking all the complicated stuff that we like and pushing it down lower and in, further into the background. So just do that to the max, right? And just mm -hmm. leave it as that just like you said, that Xbox operating system. Yeah. So you have an Xbox OS. And and with an Xbox branding, and you can do your PC handhelds just like the the Rog Ally and, and the Legion Go and stuff. Have a version of that too, but also have just like we said, go to Xbox, go to Design Labs, design your case, have it look, trick it out, have freaking Master Chief, you know, um, 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 arm wrestling Marcus Phoenix on the side of the case or something. I don't know, right? But you do all that. You have an Xbox branded. 8900 XTX in there. The, the the money that people spend on TVs where the console can't even just even do what the TV can can do. The the console can't even really do that HDMI 2.1, but you got a TV that's all ready for that. People spend fifteen hundred dollars on a TV. You tell me you won't spend. Two thousand dollars on a on a on a on a gaming device that 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 will actually deliver on the performance and it's Xbox branded the hell I think they would I think they would but hey yeah I think yeah I think I think an intermixer I I I would still pitch that they go low end and I was suggesting Nvidia so that you would you would make customers think that they were getting right a, a better deal right a better performance deal in, in getting an nvidia card i hate to say it, but give them something to console war with the playstation people about about being better you know exactly it, it will completely kill the power narrative and phil could come back and say i told you guys i would never lose the power <laughs> the power he, he could come back and try to say hey i didn't lie to you guys see look what i said we would never lose the power narrative again now look at that if you want the power you just gotta go to the website design lab and, and design your, your monster that eats monsters for breakfast you did you do that you know say yeah there we go it was oh, <laughs> and bring and bring sidewinder controllers back you cowards oh, man. <laughs> let's go wrap this up man it's, it's 12 30 at night man we, we do this every time logic is here we have like five hour podcasts every logic, time logic logic, is here. we go keep here to 12 30 at night again and we did it anyway and we did it anyway i blame forte for for going off on tangents for, so often and just going off topic it's all his fault I, I, you, if, I'll, you I'll take it. bring I'll take all it. your complaints to gaming forte that's gaming forte on youtube twitter all that stuff just you know mm -hmm. send them a dm um and and and, and cuss them out anyway get, we'll get up out of here <laughs> I, I, I gotta give you part of the credit for that though for bringing up that uh for putting that forza motorsport gameplay in the, uh, hey, in the yeah, video. yeah 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 i did not have to comment on that that was all on y'all look that's that's not i i just showed gameplay it wasn't good gameplay it didn't matter okay no one had to say anything about how bad my racing is anywho game logic let everyone know where they can find you sir 
And, no, I, and I'll make sure all your, your details are in the descriptions once uh, we, we're all said and done. I appreciate it. Uh, if you want to catch up with me on the Enough to Keep Going Weekly Games podcast on the E2KG Network podcasting channel on YouTube, you can catch me there. Uh, you can catch me on a uh, r- random uh, solo cast that I do called Talking About Games. Um, for that, uh, I don't have a set schedule for it. I, like I said, I don't want to stress myself out by telling myself I'm going to do it every Tuesday night or Saturday morning. Um, but uh, keep an eye out on the Twitter account on the front page of the YouTube channel, Rounding Off Infinity, um, to see when I'm going to go live and do that. That is a deep dive podcast where I get into the financials, technical, and uh, historical aspects of the gaming industry for any for some you know small set of news stories in the current news cycle so i'll pick something up that's you know that's current but then i will do a deep dive on it with like the background of a given studio kind of like we talked about tonight with the whole history of westwood studios yala and uh, danger close games Uh, so things like that i try and do a little extra research and kind of bring up some additional details that you know you may not always hear on other podcasts cool 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 Glad to have you, man. Please uh, join us anytime you're free, man. Um, Forte, what you Yo. got going on for the rest of the week? Uh, man, um, finished working on this um, stuff for the sh- for the channel. It just started working on that again after a little bit of time away from it. So going to try to get that done within the next couple of weeks. Um, play some more games, finish out Final Fantasy, because you got to be interested to see exactly where the story is going to go now um and battlefield and stuff like that so it working out because working out is it's 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 great it's great 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 but um with me gary forte youtube and twitter um check it out uh dps next channel next week on my channel it's gonna be great and um enjoy the games that you're playing as usual and uh we will see you guys next week all right, and for myself, uh, I'm going to attempt to play Dragon's Dogma 2 tonight. Um, from the way people are talking online, um, <laughs> get in, get in. uh, well, I mean, well, it's not like I don't think it's live service or that you have to be online, but it's uh, uh, there are some some issues. Uh, people or some people are saying it's unplayable on PC, uh, it may be unplayable on their rig. I don't know about mine, we'll see what happens. But there is also this whole little remember how Ubisoft used to charge people for aspects of gameplay that were annoying uh so apparently um they have some microtransactions in here which are are charging people to unlock fast travel locations oh Mm. Uh, any way to monetize your game yeah i guess i'll be walking because I ain't doing that. <laughs> and guess what? You can and, forget you know, that. And guess what? These 10 percenters will be walking with you if this was to happen. Shout out to Bat Brat, Basement Radio RK Podcast, Mass, uh, Texas, Corey Hale, your boy Roy, FTW, Donnell Brown, Romeo Terrell, Hargy Shani, Slumber Backslap, DJ Oris, and that guy Smitty. Appreciate you guys. All the love and support. And we will talk to you guys later. Yep, and on my side, I got Neil S., Stardust Acero, Texas, your boy Roy, FTW, Corey Hill, Donnell Brown, J387, Enrique Hargi Shani, Trevor Birdsong, Homie One Kenobi, Game and Forte, and that guy Smitty. So, yes, yes, uh, we, we love you guys. Thank you guys for supporting us. Um, Brian E said, which game are we talking about? I was talking about Dragon's Dogma 2. Apparently, Dragon's Dogma 2 got some uh some foolishness in there that they didn't add until uh after reviews were out. Shame on you, Capcom. Um, but we're out though. Peace. You guys take care. Peace.